This is one of the strongest druid builds in the game, and possibly the safest, and nobody even knows it exists. I one-shot a tier 87 boss, casually strolled through tier 100 dungeons that I didn't even like, and all of this with a skill that nobody even uses. Now I'm going to show you how to make the build for yourself. And if you find the video useful, like, comment, and subscribe. And stay till the end to see a full tier 100 dungeon clear. Hey guys, I'm super excited to show you this boulder build I've been working on. Uh, I'll jump right into showing you the skills. So for Blood Howl, uh, we're using this to gain back spirit. It also heals us and it activates our Vigilance passive. Again, with Earth and Bulwark, we activate our Vigilance passive. Um, but this is going to be used as a huge source of damage for priority targets. So if we have enemies that are just aren't dying, or there's a big clump of enemies that you want to kill really quickly, or suppressed enemies, this is a great one to go to. Um, but this is also going to be another source of Unstoppable. Uh, for Trample, it is another source of Unstoppable, but it's also Movement, CC, and the main reason I use it is for the Spirit. With Petrify, this is our ultimate, and this can stun everything around you all at once, uh, which is really great for the survivability aspect of it when you need that panic button. But it also increases the critical strike damage that you deal to enemies. So you can use this in combo with Earthen Bulwark, and you can basically one shot a boss. For Wind Shear, we're using this for the spirit build. Um, it also gives us movement speed and has a chance to make enemies vulnerable. And because we're using Boulder, the only sources of vulnerable we have in this build is the Wind Shear and the Exploit Glyph. So it's very important to be able to use this every other hit. Uh, so we use this, then we use Boulder because we're going back and forth to Shapeshift. Um, and that will keep vulnerable in the enemy and keep our movement speed up. Uh, one more note about Petrify. This also gives you spirit when you kill enemies. So it's extremely useful. And uh, yeah, it'll keep you topped off the entire time. Uh, Boulder is our main source of damage here. So we're actually using the aspect that uh, makes Boulder a core skill. And also putting on the two-hander doubles the effect of this. So we're actually getting 240% damage from Boulder. But yeah, as you can see with Boulder, um, it can uh, knock enemies back constantly. So you just aim lines towards the enemies and you're gonna be knocking them back. You never have to worry about them getting next to you because you can constantly keep them away from you. For a gear, I'm using the Sillies. Um, this is basically required in order to make your boulder into a shape-shifting skill. This activates a lot of passives in the Paragon board and the skill tree. Um, this is also going to keep us fortified constantly, so it's very nice. For the chest piece, you can use Insatiable Fury here, but I highly prefer using the Legendary. I used Insatiable Fury all the way up until I was trying to push higher Nightmare Dungeons. And honestly, as you can see on this, I got two damage stats that was unintentional. They just happened to be really high, and I didn't have any better chest piece. So I'm missing a couple of uh, damage resist or health stats here. Um, but extremely good. But yeah, we're using uh, Aspect of Might and as much damage resist in life as possible. For the gloves, I use Night Howlers. This gives us 10% more critical strike chance, which is very important because we're using Tempted Fate as one of our heart gems. For the stats, critical strike chance, attack speed, all stats, uh, critical strike damage with earth skills, willpower, uh, overpower. There's a lot of things that work here. Lucky hit, don't really care about. I don't use much lucky hit at all. Um, the only one I have is the... Uh, energize and the spirit boons, but it's not worth building into because you shouldn't have spirit issues anyways. For the pants, we go for all damage resist again, but the one thing here is plus four ranks to bowler is extremely useful for upping your damage, so make sure you get that. And for the aspect, we're using disobedience. On the boots, we're using a ballistic aspect. There's probably a few different things you could use here. I just went with ballistic because it's just more damage, but yeah, there's there's defensive choices, things that'll help you with your movement speed, uh, you know, ghost walkers or whatever the other one is that makes you unstoppable if you're injured there's there's a lot of decent choices here but for the stats movement speed um, i'm using all stats and intelligence just to hit those extra passives in the paragon board but um, if i had better rolls and stuff i wouldn't need that anyways uh, spirit cost reduction obviously is useful um, but surprisingly you don't run out of spirit very easily in this build for our weapon um, i've got vulnerable damage distant uh, critical strike damage with earth and all stats I'd probably change the distant for critical strike damage and maybe all stats for core, but having all stats there really helps you hit those bonuses in the Paragon board. So it's up to you and what your points, uh, you know, math out to. Uh, for the amulet, I have uh, retaliation, which is extremely good, 60% damage uh, with core skills. 
Resonance is very good because um, we're constantly alternating between our basic and our boulder. Uh, any damage reduction you can get, cooldown reduction, quick shift passive, uh, there's a lot of options here that you can go with. For the first ring, we're doing natural balance. And the second ring, we're doing expectant. Expectant or accelerating work, but I think expectant ends up being better. It's just a 30% damage increase when you're uh, basic basic attacking which is basically all the time in this build for our heart gems we're doing tempting fate for the critical damage uh, but make, keep in mind that if you don't get critical strikes uh, then you're not getting full use out of this so make sure your critical strike chance is very high before you use this um, we're using barber and that is very good especially when you're pushing enemies back they will all get pulled together in a line and the barber will be exploding on the group of enemies and then finally we have revenge just straight 20 percent damage reduction a little bit extra damage uh it's really nice uh for our gems i'm doing ruby on everything for the max life um as you can see here we have a ton of maximum life this is 23,400. um but you know you can use losing track here there it is if we use 30 percent life that takes us up to 27,500, which is just a massive amount of life but yeah so ruby for the armor uh, for the weapon, I'm going with Emerald just because I like having the extra boss damage. Uh, technically, Sapphire is better here all around, but bosses are the main area, if anywhere, that this build struggles, so I focus on that. Um, but honestly, a lot of times you can one-shot bosses if you get a good crit off. For the Spirit Boons, I'm using Wariness, Scythe Talons, Iron Feather, Energize, and Obsidian Slam. Uh, Energize was basically just a choice I made because there was nothing else that I really liked. And Calamity technically could extend the duration of your uh, Petrify from like four seconds to five and seven seconds to like eight point something. Uh, but I think realistically Energize is probably your best bet just to help you keep that spirit topped off and make sure you never have issues with it. For our abilities, let's get up here. So I'm using Wind Shear. I've already talked about that. Um, and we're taking the Fierce Wind Shear. Uh, for the passives and the core tree, we're just going to take Wild Impulses to max, uh, Predatory Instinct to max, and Iron Fur to max. Uh, extra crit, extra uh, damage reduction, and more core damage. Then in our defensive skills, we've got our Earthen Bulwark. We're taking that just for the innate Earthen Bulwark mostly. So we don't need the extra points there. Uh, but this will do massive amounts of damage. We've got Vigilance for the extra damage reduction, and Blood Howl is going to be giving us that spirit and stuff we talked about. Uh, we've got Nature's Reach here. This is actually very strong if you push enemies away from you because, um, you know, at once they get out of the range uh, to start getting this bonus, this is going to actually be 18% uh, damage because you're knocking enemies back. So this is actually quite good. Um, and honestly, that's another thing you could take on your amulet that would be worth worthwhile. Then under our wrath skills, we've got boulder and we're maxing this out. This is nine because of the four on our pants. Um, and then we're taking natural boulder because uh, we're always fortified and that's just more critical strike chance to make sure our tempting fate is activating. We've got crushing earth maxed and then safeguard to one just for the, you know, faster fortify. And I don't think it really matters, but... I tossed it in there. And then Trample for the 40 Spirit. Um, if we move down here, actually before I move down, I'll show you something. Um, so I tossed three points in a circle of life. Um, if you don't need the survivability, then you can toss those back in a stone guard. Um, but I went circle of life just because I wanted a little extra survivability for like poison and random stuff like that. But you don't really got to worry about that too much. For the ultimate, we're taking Petrify in both points. And then we're taking Defiance, Natural Disaster, and Resonance. Technically, this one point natural disaster could go somewhere else since I put points in Circle of Life. Uh, but there's nowhere I really care about, so I just left it there. Uh, maybe I could just take it and toss it over here or something. And then these ones are pretty important. Quick Shift, we're getting 15% damage there. And then 12% damage reduction we're getting here because we're constantly shape-shifting. And then we're going Ursine Strength. We get 20% maximum life from this. And we're also getting 30% damage. Originally in the build, I had Earth and Might, um, but I realized I don't have spirit issues and my critical strike chance was already so high. Why was I even bothering? And uh, I've definitely liked Earthine. Earthine. Earthine strength much more. For the Paragon boards, these also went through a couple of iterations. I just changed uh, once again today. But these are very good, and I've been clearing tier 100s with these. So we're going... Over this way, grabbing Tenacity and all these uh, nice defensive nodes. And then over here, we're getting Prime and all these uh, extra life nodes there. We're throwing Exploit into our first Glyph slot there. I think it's just easiest to 
spare people the confusion, uh, but also it ends up being one of the better spots for it to be anyways. Um, I've grabbed Resolve and Impel here. Then above that, we've got the Inner Beast board, where we are actually grabbing the Legendary node here, uh, because we are constantly shape-shifting, so this is reducing our spirit costs. All of the defensive nodes here, so that's Slayer and Havoc, and then we're getting Tenacity, bunch more defensive nodes, more defensive nodes, Determination. Here we have Undaunted, and we're actually loading up on Undaunted. We have so many Intelligence nodes around here, so we get 97% damage from that which is huge, um, and also Shapeshifter. And then we've got Nimble over here on the right. Uh, and then I went left first, and here I grabbed the Constricting Tendrils tree, um, but we're here for the Glyph slot, which we're doing Shapeshifting, and Courage, and Nature's Will, and just more life nodes there. Then if we go over to the right, we are grabbing Survival Instincts, which is actually a really nice legendary node. And we're going to be getting Bulwark, more damage reduction, a Spearhead, that's a huge amount of damage because we're using... Barber enemies are taking a lot of damage all at once uh, because they start the barber thing while they have above healthy amount and then they just take a huge chunk of damage all at once so it's actually really good. And then we have Territorial here, mostly using that for the damage reduction but it is a little bit extra damage if enemies are close. And then we've got Battleworn Hide and Grizzly and Zealous. And then if we go up above here, we're taking Ancestral Guidance, I and mean, we're also getting Reclamation, Natural Attunement, Harmony, and finally the Glyph slot is for Dominate. But we do have a reasonable amount of overpower in the build. Technically, this could be uh, swapped out for Spirit, but we'd have to lose points somewhere else and rearrange to make that happen. So I went for Dominate just so I didn't have to lose any survivability or anything anywhere else.
must wait a moment.
Overall, I'm super happy with how this build turned out. It took a lot of work to get it to the right spot, but it really came together. I've been quite busy with my real life, but I'm getting back into the groove of making videos and streaming, so I hope to see you there. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Daddy drew it out. <laughs>